What's up, everybody? I'm the hook. And I'm the blade. And I'm the historian. Ah, okay. <laughs> and together we're, hmm, you know. Welcome to the Hookland Blade Marks, a show about all things AC landmarks. I'm your host, Lawson. With me, as always, is your host, Timothy. And we are joined this episode by a very special guest, the one and only uh, Mr. Arshak from Assassin's Creed Landmarks on Twitter, YouTube, and elsewhere. The standard Ottoman hookblade has two parts. The hook and the blade. How are you doing today, Arsh? Doing well, guys. Very, very glad and like humble to be over here you guys are so amazing oh. in the podcast man dude thank you we love your your posts and your tweets and stuff very insightful and and informed content that that really helps expose people i think to the historical side of of assassin's creed it's it's good shit man it's good yeah yeah historical landmarks figures i'm your boy i'm your real life sean hastings you know <laughs> <laughs> Now, it would have been maybe obvious to to get you on for an episode about landmarks, but we did kind of, you know, we've done the whole cities thing. And you know what? If people want to learn about landmarks, they, they could just go to your Twitter. They don't need us. Yeah, you guys did it with Blue. That uh, that was an amazing podcast, man. Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll pass on your praise unless he hears it. But if, <laughs> if you're listening, Blue... If you're listening, Blue, it was, it was really good to have you on as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. Oh man. Actually, actually, guys, Blue is canceled because today is all about our shock. Yeah, boy. Forget Blue. Love you, Blue. Our shock infinite. <laughs> our sho- <laughs> to infinity and our shock. Our sh- our shock infinite. <laughs> Dude, if that if you weren't AC landmarks, that would have to be your Twitter yeah, handle. Yeah, hundred percent. At our shock infinite. <laughs> Do you like Bioshock, Arsh? I played it once. It's not my type of tea. It's not your cup of game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, my 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 cup of games requires historical <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, I feel Bioshock that. Bioshock <laughs> is historical. It's a fucking like documentary almost. Yeah, dude. You got I mean, there's like they're both taking place in different time periods. They get some points for that. It's a fantastical history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Assassin's Creed also kind of <laughs> is, but you know what? I'm not going to argue with you about it, okay? You're allowed to not like uh, your namesake, Bioshock. <laughs> Bioshock. I love it. it's, it's actually, Bioshock is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> if, 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 if that was my freaking Twitter handle, that would have been great. <laughs> because, like, Bioshock... <laughs> I give biographies on, uh, and my name is Arshak. <laughs> you, you do yeah. biographies of of historical characters. Look, we brought it full circle. We brought it around town. <laughs> what an amazing historical transition. characters is the subject. It's actually called a segue. <laughs> yeah, segue. Yes, mm-hmm. segue. That, that is what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Lawson Segway, the Segway King. <laughs> All right, so Arshak, what's up, homie? What is, in your opinion, the best historical character in the franchise? Blackbeard. I freaking love that guy. Fuck, dude. That you can't use it. I was gonna. That was mine. I was gonna say Blackbeard. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. Darby wrote him very well. But is Blackbeard your favorite because of the performance or because of the actual historical figure, Blackbeard? Blackbeard is my favorite because, like, he is. Both historically and with performance, the most intimidating guy ever. Okay. And, like, the amount of information that Darby got on Blackbeard and based it on AC4 Black Flag is crazy. Because, like, I took three days researching Blackbeard and trying to find his comparisons to, like, real-life history. And, man, like, it just, like, boggled my mind. Like, I freaking love Darby, man. (laughs) <laughs> so he's your favorite because you feel like there was a lot of research and effort put into the character a lot of research and effort yeah like he's a very complex character and to you know bring him to life 
like he's the best version of Blackbeard. He's if you tell me Blackbeard, I will remember AC4 Blackbeard, not freaking Pirates of the Caribbean Blackbeard. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh I like Blackbeard so much because a lot of times in the AC games, the historical characters, as I'm sure we'll get into more detail about, they're kind of boring. It's like, oh yes, here's, you know, fucking Alexander Graham Bell or Socrates or any of the, they're doing the thing that they do. Hey, look, Darwin, he's talking about evolution and shit. They're doing the things that they like to do. And then with Blackbeard, I feel like they took advantage of the most interesting parts of the character uh, of the person historically in the sense that there is a, a popular image of what Blackbeard is. And it seems like, and I don't actually know this firsthand. It's just sort of what I've been told and, and what I believed and interpreted from the game. So maybe you can comment on this, Arsh. It seems like Blackbeard, rather than necessarily being like the most ruthless or evil or, or scary or intimidating badass of the pirate world, it was all very theatrical and it was a, a reputation that he deliberately cultivated that wasn't necessarily a reflection on who he was as a person. And I just love that. Like I went into this game expecting a certain Blackbeard because of what I've heard about Blackbeard and, and the way that he's been depicted in other media. And the Blackbeard we got was a more interesting and complex character in AC four. So that's, that's what I appreciate about him. Yeah. Yeah. It showed both his human side and his, like, actor side, because historically, Blackbeard was known as, like, either Edward Teach or Edward Thatch, but, like, he wanted to look intimidating. That's why there is uh, there is Blackbeard, and it's all a part of his act. And, yeah, like, that one scene with Steed just defines... yeah who Blackbeard is. That's why it's like pasted into our memories because that's his act that like, man, I would have loved to meet him in real life, but he would probably kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. It's just, just like I'm intimidated. Just, just talking about him because I, <laughs> I love the character so much. Uh, speaking to kind of what you were saying last about like the theatrical elements of Blackbeard and kind of how like, he was able to just take a ship without even firing cannons because they just feared him so much. Yeah, it's kind of yeah interesting that uh, as well as because where Black Flag I think does some of these historical elements well is uh, it's kind of generally believed that Blackbeard and perhaps you can confirm or deny this Arsh, but um, Blackbeard would light his actual beard on fire <laughs> before going into a battle or something, but in the game it's just these like ropes that are on fire that are attached to his hat. But you could imagine that from a distance, it would look as if his beard is on fire, right? I think that's like yeah. a really kind of interesting, like smoke and mirrors type thing that Blackbeard could have been utilizing, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I also rank Blackbeard so highly just because even outside of his status as a historical character in the AC context, he is also a good character in the context of the game's narrative. And the the sort of friendship between him and Edward is really well conveyed and his death in the in the story is probably one of the more effective and emotional you know death scenes in an Assassin's Creed game period uh like pretty much it's that one and the hanging of Ezio's brothers and father that that like actually got an emotional response of like hey fuck you game i'm sad about this you weren't sad about soma <laughs> who soma <laughs> that was that, okay that was such a freaking cheesy death i'm like okay if you're gonna Dude. kill a character don't freaking copy a fucking death ah yeah also the fact that like i'm sure that they just thought they were like referencing or paying homage, yeah but like doesn't hunwald dies too right yeah, yeah but very 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 unceremoniously <laughs> like he dies in the background it's kind of weird to be like all right two characters died at the same ish time and like feel bad about it now <laughs> Yeah, but again, because the game is a hundred hours long, you forgot who those people were by the time. They but died, you definitely so, did. Uh, you yeah. definitely did have interactions with with Hunwald way recently than you would have Soma, because Soma was like the first arc. That is true, or one of the first arcs. I mean, like I love Valhalla, man, but I don't know that that moment just just got me kind of like, nah, it's meant to be epic, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, anticlimactic. Anyway, B besides shitting on Valhalla, let me ask you, Tim. 
Since since we're over here on Team Blackbeard, yeah, who would you say is your favorite historical character in Assassin's Creeddom? So my answer is going to be a little bit more underwhelming. It could just kind of be like a recency thing, but I I gotta go with Napoleon. Ooh. Yeah, that is a bad answer because while Napoleon <laughs> is not in the game very much, um, I feel like he's very well acted. Um, his opening scene is very good. I feel like he's he's rep- represented pretty well. But it's not like he's super in depth in like a main part of the story like Blackbeard is. So I'm not saying that right. Napoleon is like a better representation of a historical figure than Blackbeard is. But <laughs> no, it's just your opinion. I do like Napoleon, what we get of him. Yeah. I think I could like Napoleon better if it weren't for dead kings. Right. I agree with you. He also pops up in some co op missions, but it's not like he. It's not, it's not like it's not like he's. It's not like it's like a fucking rendered yeah. cutscene. Anyway, go ahead. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. Like if I thought of Napoleon as like, oh, you know, he's this politician or, or sure. him, you know, military figure. He's doing what he's doing at in France at the time. And he just has this sort of brief intersection with Arno and, and they their their interests kind of line up for this just this sort of one sequence really. I could appreciate that as like a slightly more novel use of a historical character in the Assassin's Creed canon, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, once Dead Kings enters the picture and he's supposed to be a more substantial character, but he's kind of just doing some villain shit, it seems yeah. like. And he's a little more cartoonish. He's a little less interesting. I mean, Arno suffers the same fate of like getting progressively less interesting as the story goes on. Yeah. So it's fitting. It makes sense for Unity. But damn, I just, yeah, I can't I can't love Napoleon that much. I, I, I'm definitely not like you to lot. Like I'm not. I'm not including Dead Kings yeah. into like my Napoleon enjoyment. Okay, and and it's not it's not like I I have like a Napoleon poster on my wall or anything. I just think uh, of all the <laughs> you know who does uh, is it Greg? <laughs> Sorry, not no. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> who my uh, my twin sister's husband is a straight up Napoleon fanatic. Nice. Okay, like he just fucking loves Napoleon. I'm surprised that never came up in conversation. <laughs> yeah. I, well, you know, it's funny because. I was when I was doing my replay of Unity for the podcast most recently, I was like playing. He was like, Oh, what are you playing? I was like, uh, this is Assassin's Creed. This one has Napoleon in it. And I expected him to be like, What? <laughs> There's Napoleon in a game? That's so cool. And instead he's kinda like, Oh huh. yeah. And I was like, Don't you fucking love Napoleon, bro? But he does. He really does. He just doesn't like Assassin's Creed at all. Napoleon's also an interesting <laughs> example because it's kind of like Leonardo da Vinci where they utilized him in and similar to Leonardo. Before they've reached like peak fame, Leonardo da yeah. Vinci was not a household name while Ezio was hanging out with him, and S- Napoleon yeah. had not reached the um, amount of notoriety that he would come to have when Arno meets him. And I think that makes these characters yeah. easier to characterize um, because, like, let's say if you did Genghis Khan, right? You would have to utilize him yeah. during his reign. Or, or rather, if you did Genghis Khan during his reign, you would you, you would kind of be obligated to showcase that part of the character. Whereas if you do the if you do them before they're completely relevant and like what put them on the map as as an historical figure that we know about for years, you can make them into a person more. I feel like, and then you can have the obligation later on of of making Leonardo the person that makes these war machines and that makes a tank and stuff you know what i mean yeah yeah i agree with tim because like napoleon is this figure in the french revolution that's gaining advantage like dude the guy was a freaking failure up until the french revolution that's when he started like you know gaining favors and doing his political games and stuff to gain attraction i'm i'm actually like researching napoleon right now he's like one of the next threads at the time that you see him he is like an equal to arno right not in dead kings but in the palace when you see him he he is an equal to arno and he's like trying to find answers too and i appreciate that like when we find him in the middle of making a name for himself but yeah like he's a very complex kind of character He's more bourgeoisie. He's just trying to gain his spot in history when you see him. But in Dead Kings, that is put like a little too much. But his yeah. connection to Egypt is so freaking amazing because, yeah, as we know, it, it, it's because of Napoleon that we know 
uh, shit about like AC origins, like about Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. The other thing, uh, this is just sort of stream of consciousness. I appreciate that uh, Napoleon is one of the few historical characters I can think of off the top of my head right now who we popularly tend to know what he looked like. Like we've all seen paintings and portraits of Napoleon. And so when you see him in the game, you're like, damn, that seems like what Napoleon probably could have looked like. Yeah. And I don't know what Leonardo da Vinci looked like. I don't know what Blackbeard looked like. Yeah, but... that's a good point. Yeah, because the, the the most popular Leonardo da Vinci paintings, I believe, are when he's old and bearded. I, I and so yeah. when we see young Leonardo, it's in and, and that I think also helps us separate from like the icon that we know to this character in this game because he looks so different. Yeah, and it's also a cultural thing because like I'm sure if I Googled, I could find pictures or portraits of like, you know, some of syndicates, historical sure. characters. It's just that I feel like Napoleon has that cultural impact where yeah. we've all seen the paintings. We've all, we just know what Napoleon For looked sure. like, you know, and it, but it's funny you say that though, because while I, like I agree with you and I'm sure most people would, they still felt the need to in the, uh, in the unity, like story trailer when Napoleon pops up to dub in Arno saying Napoleon, because people wouldn't know otherwise. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, I think they have to do that anyway. You know, like maybe even if everyone knew what Napoleon looked like, they'd probably still have to call him out by name just to get the point across. Yeah, perhaps they're not all about subtlety in these trailers. <laughs> there was this one trailer of of AC Unity where Napoleon confronts Arno. It's like he he puts a gun at him, and then he's like, uh uh uh, and I'm like. Damn, this is so cool. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a great, it's a great scene. Oh yeah, it is a great scene. And to be honest with you, that's what got me to buy AC Unity. Really, that? <laughs> Plus the fact that it was co-op, but like, okay, with historical figures, you don't get a lot of historical figures in Unity. You get Mirabeau, Robespierre, Robespierre, and like you know the monarchy, basically. I'm only learning right now that Mirabeau was a real person. Oh yeah. Oh totally. yeah, Mirabeau was a real person, dude. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, M Mirabeau was like a low key like historical figure though, hence why assassin. Marquis de Sade is a historical figure too. Oh, Marquis de Sade is a good one. I think I did a thread about him a while back ago. He was an important figure in the French Revolution, but like I don't know how AC got him in there, but he's like very quirky and stuff. So I don't know why, but I definitely knew about Marquis de Sade before Unity came out. Not for anything to do with the French Revolution, but purely as the origin point for the concept of sadism. Oh. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, like the mm -hmm. idea, like the word sadism mm -hmm. being sadistic actually comes from Marquis de Sade, I believe. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Huh. Yeah. Because he literally just liked to get off on torturing people. Or and he probably like had sex he with was, underage people. He basically originated like BDSM in a way. He's a really influential person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, having a, having a word as popular as sadism is pretty. I know, erotically, yeah, that's an accomplishment. erotically influential. <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 the sexual grandfather of many a leather daddy. I mean, you see him right in the middle of uh, a cafe, dressed dressing like this, like dude. Can we talk about how deep that fucking V is? Oh my god, yeah, that is the deepest V I've ever seen. <laughs> that shit is past his belly button. That <laughs> exactly, is, that is fashion icon status right there yeah. i wish i was brave enough to wear a v that deep it's he's insane. like oh arno <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, darling <laughs> oh man freaking Mark you know, side. yeah it bothers me how all those characters in unity have like perfectly white and teeth it's like that wouldn't be the case yeah it's even worse in syndicate because we know the british they're really averse to dental hygiene <laughs> <laughs> and like that, like fucking Victorian London, everyone has model white teeth. What's going on with that? They had toothpaste. Okay. <laughs> Where are the people who cry about historical accuracy because there are female gang members in syndicate? Why aren't they talking about the teeth? Speaking of teeth, <laughs> isn't it really funny how uh, there are certain historical <laughs> figures where they just, they're, they're pretty respectful with and like Napoleon, some people might think he's a terrible dude, but you know, he's not played evil in, in where he, where he shows up. But then you have people like Rodrigo Borgia who are just the worst people in history, uh, both in yeah. the game and in, 
and like I guess in real life, it, it's funny how it's just like there's certain people where it's acceptable to like represent them as these like mustache twirling dudes. Like there was that Netflix show about the Borges, which I'm sure what didn't paint them in a in a in a positive light or anything, but uh Yeah. Oh, I love that show. I haven't seen it. Is it good? Borgia is Alan Rickon himself. Yeah, it is. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was like one of my favorite TV shows. Like I was hooked on it. It's also partly because I took a Renaissance class back then, so it was great. It is it is interesting when you can see when they choose for Assassin's Creed a really, you know, well known historical figure and you can kind of compare them to different you know, iterations, because it'll be fun. Like if my family watches like the Borgias, which they did at some point, or like Medici, I think they watched Black Sails, shit like that. My sister and I will kind of compare and contrast. Like she'll talk about, oh yeah, you know, Cesare and Lucrezia and shit like that. And I'll be like, oh yeah, they were horny for each other in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. <laughs> and it's like, I think it's cool that they these different media franchises all take different approaches to the same characters, but there are things that they are that they have in common that they're united by the same historical basis, and you get to have that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ch- when Cesare and, and Lucrezia were like you know romantically involved and stuff, that's like rumors because the Borgia were bad, so people got like rumors about them. I don't think it would be like factual to to say so, but it is commonly understood that way. Interesting. Yeah, uh, which is which is why in Brotherhood, when you see that, yeah, it was rumors and stuff. But in real life, Lucrezia was actually was a really really awesome figure. <laughs> I, I thought you were about to say in real life, Lucrezia was really really ugly. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what do you mean by awesome <laughs> in this case? She she grew up in a power hungry family when all she wanted was like normal life. AC Wiki and I, when we collaborated, we covered all the women of Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And we included Lucrezia in there too. When I say she was an awesome figure, like I, I what I remember from what I read is that at the end of her life, she married into a family and like lived happily ever after outside of Rome, not dealing with her family's bullshit. So she kind of fled the the family, so to speak. Yeah, in Brotherhood, she's portrayed as this like villain type of sorts, but she's only a villain because her brother is a huge douchebag. So, which Cesare was a huge douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you like Cesare as a character in Brotherhood? Because he's he's kind of one of those historical characters that I feel like. I don't I don't like him very much. I don't think he's a well-written character, but does he feel like accurate to history and and stuff? I haven't researched about him. I just know that that he was a difficult brother to deal with. I'm sure he gave her a lot of difficulties if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh th- I will neither confirm or deny that, but um <laughs> but he's viewed as this annoying antagonist and he just kept yelling and yelling and yelling it's like oh no man can murder me i'm like fuck you here you go (laughs) (laughs) drop the ledge like (laughs) thing man cesare is the most annoying assassin's creed figure that i know of next to socrates because socrates just questioned me a lot i'm like just let me live my life homie (laughs) just fuck (laughs) off socrates i get i mean it's i i felt like he was written kind of funny like i i I saw what they were going for with Socrates and I appreciated it of just like that one dude who's like, he's kind of a well actually type person. He's kind of like a always annoying you with philosophical questions. And I, I enjoy that. He, he gets to be exactly as good as any character, historical character in Odyssey is allowed to be in the, in the sense that any character in Odyssey is only there to like, motivate a quest so they don't get to actually be part of the story very much so they kind of all have to be pretty thinly drawn because they're just going to make you go do something and that's true for alcibiades and and or alcibiades i guess is how that's pronounced you know yeah well pretty much all of them the only person i remember in assassin's creed odyssey is socrates because like While he was annoying to listen to, because, you know, that's how, you know, philosophical conversations 
are sometimes. He was like a fun person to be around. And he was also like this figure where I was taking a Greek class, a Greek history yeah. class uh, back then and uh, reading Plato's The Republic. And I was also playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey at the same time. So it became kind of like a, a shared experience for me, which I uh, appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally get that, and I feel like there are a lot of similarities between the historical characters in the Syndicate and in Odyssey, both of the you know Quebec games, mm. because I feel like there are like various different camps that historical characters can be in. One I call the, the Darby camp. So between you know Revelations with like Suleiman is a great example, and AC four, and even to some extent Valhalla. Those historical characters are our characters first and foremost. You know, Ivar is playing a role in the story that he's got a personality that's based on presumably some some research, but it's not like he's just there to be one dimensional and do whatever it is that Ivar is famous for doing. I really don't know because I've never looked into it. Um, so we'll, we'll call that the Darby camp. And that's where you get your black beards. And that's that's kind of the best place to be. Then you have uh, what I would consider the shitty camp which is where you have games like ac3 and and unity where the characters are there but they're not they're not even really characters or particularly historically distinct or, or anything let me let me rephrase that it's not like george washington and ac3 is a very distinct character you know what i mean like he's hard to describe all of those historical characters in ac3 like we just like we said they're kind of wax figures they're really boring they they are pretty much interchangeable with each other they are not great. And then I think there's the Quebec ones where those characters are distinct. They are notably different from each other, but they're also just meant to be doing exactly whatever is the one thing that person was famous for. If it's Alexander Graham Bell, he's inventing things. If it's if it's Darwin, he's doing science. If it's Marx, he's liberating people. You know, if it's Socrates, his philosophizing, they just find the one thing that person's famous for doing and they use that as a as a way to generate quests for you to do. So those are, I feel like, the three approaches that AC has taken. I do agree with you that there is a Darby camp. The way Darby writes the historical characters is like if they're actually right there with you. Yeah. Like even Prince Suleiman, when he was like just a kid you get to see his wisdom playing out and yeah and you get to see how he's going to become a great leader but you don't see the great yeah. leader himself and i and i appreciate that revelations was like a, a, a great ac game but like i also feel like when you said ac3 and what else did you say ac3 and i think unity largely falls into that camp for the few historical characters it does have like i yeah. don't think napoleon is particularly distinct as a character or or has much to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, like games like AC3 and Unity and stuff with George Washington, when I researched what like Washington did to the uh, to the to the Indian tribe and when I saw like, you know, that Haytham, Connor and and Washington's scene where he wrote a letter uh, to purge like the Indian camp, that was actually, you know, factually real. Wow. You get to see like these historical events happening, but like as characters, I didn't feel, uh, you know, as drawn to George Washington as I was to like Black Flag characters or even like yeah. even like Valhalla characters because Valhalla characters notably Alfred. Yeah. You get to see Alfred not at, not at his peak, but like, you know, going up the ladder. And you get to see his like, you know, calm figure that was portrayed in The Last Kingdom as well. Yeah. And from what I researched about Alfred, yeah, he would be that that type of character, like that ending scene with yeah. Eivor and Alfred. I'm like, oh, what an amazing scene. But like no Battle of Eddington. And I was disappointed <laughs> with with not seeing like the Battle of Eddington because then it we'll get it in the it, DLC. Don't worry. Oh yeah, for sure. It's gonna be in <laughs> Ireland. Eddington was in England. I don't know how it's gonna freaking mash up together. I don't Explain know, man. it to us, Darby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it, it's just like they're all at. 
different camps, but at the end of the day, when I when I research historical characters, I am like very surprised to see like you know these little bits of accuracies that are in the games because I don't know it just gives me like a like chills you know like oh man <laughs> yeah it's important for me to clarify that when I divide into those like three sort of camps basically those three kinds of ways that they handle things it's less about historical accuracy I think from from what I can tell every uh, Assassin's Creed historical character has been at least pretty much well researched yeah there's something um I think is worth pointing out when it comes to like historical figures in in these games and most m- most recently too. I think AC1 is a is a, is an interesting example for two reasons. One, AC1 has a good amount of historical figures. You I just don't think you notice it for one reason because they're not as famous and obviously everyone knows who Leonardo da Vinci is. A lot of people are going to know who Borgia is. So I think that's one part of why AC1 is a little bit more subtle with their historical figures, but also there's something to keep in mind with how AC1 handles it because all of the historical figures in that game are also your targets. Whereas in AC2 yeah. and, and pretty much every game beyond that, you have historical figures who are both ally targets, other characters who you bump into. And so AC1 is kind of this unique example in that you don't have historical figures who are at Masyaf with you or anything. You're only killing them and they're your targets. Right. And so that that it's funny you bring that up because I was just thinking to myself where which which of the three camps in which i would place even ac2 and that's challenging because on one hand we love you know leonardo da vinci and actually i think a lot of those like the pazzi and the medici they are all pretty well realized mm-hmm. characters like i would say maybe it's closer to the darby camp i agree definitely yes there is i think leonardo da vinci i'm, I'm gonna say this i know this is gonna be controversial i d- don't think he's a great character yeah i agree he's just kind of the tech guy you know he's like q or whatever he's he's the guy who gives you tech and upgrades and you have this friendship with him that i feel like is is powerful because of how it's established as like leonardo da vinci essentially gets to be one of the only characters in the story accepting say Ezio's sister who knew Ezio before shit hit the fan that's Interesting. Like Leonardo, when when Ezio goes to him for the first time after shit hits the fan and he's an assassin now, Leonardo has this like knowing like you know relationship of I I I knew this kid when he was still a kid and now he's become a man because life has has forced that upon him. So like there's there's depth there. There is it's more than just like hey, it's Leonardo da Vinci doing the thing that Leonardo is famous for, but that is still most of it. Like, on the surface, they have da Vinci, and he does drawings and tech and the things that we all know about Leonardo. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. he's kind of a Quebec yeah. camp character, but... He's a he's like a friend to Ezio. But I would say, based on, based on the friendship element and all of the other historical characters in AC2, I say we can count AC2 in the Darby camp. No, you know... On the level oh, of like yes. the style of inclusion, yeah. you know, it, I know Darby didn't write AC2, yeah. but you get it, what It's I'm also saying. interesting because given how, how with AC1, all of them are like people you're ultimately going to kill. It, it, it means that the only yeah. interactions you have with them are pretty much in their last words. And so they don't have, they don't have a lot of option right. to become a character. So I don't really think of them as characters. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. And, but I, 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 I feel like that's intentional. Yeah. Yeah, I can't hold that against them. Right. I know it's part of the Yeah, design. yeah, it, yeah. And I'm not saying you're like downgrading it for that reason. I just think like it is an interesting approach compared to AC2 where it's like here is your companion Leonardo da Vinci, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. I don't know if AC1 fits into either any of the three camps. But that may be by virtue of it not really technically having historical characters sure. in the way that we're talking about. Yeah, like it I, doesn't qualify almost. The only historical figure I remember in Assassin's Creed One are Al Mualim and Richard the Lionheart. I think as the games went along, it became more and more advantageous to them to make some of these historical figures your your friends and allies, and not so much like not all the time people that you're killing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and that also kind of brings in like I wish that there were more. Um, 
historical figures that like were actual assassins, kind of like Machiavelli. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like a lot of historical figures just kind of are in the middle. And while that's fine, it would be, it would be neat if some of them were actually assassins, and you can you can utilize that in some way. That's why I was surprised that Mirabeau was real because I felt like. If right. he was if he was real, it was a it was a baller move to just say, yeah, he was in charge of the assassins in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of uh, cool. Yeah. No, I think you're completely right about that. I would love to see more of that in like AC two, and yeah. I think I think also AC Brotherhood. Remember those Sean videos that that came up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like explaining who they are as a person and then yeah. seeing they're very useful. Yeah. And then seeing their bad side, man, that, that got me to like, you know, actually want to kill them because they're freaking bad. Yeah. People. I've yeah. never wanted to kill anyone more than I wanted to kill Uberto Alberti. Oh, fuck man. I, 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 fuck, fuck that dude. U Uberto man. Piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> One of those days. It's a good idea. I'm gonna like make, videos that are like that because those videos were so <laughs> cool man it's like uberto alberti <laughs> i know? don't think i watched any of those videos where did, where were these they're they're in the database and if you click on the figure like oh. you have to go to the conspiracy tree i think oh and if you click on one of them and sean will have a, like a, a pre-made video about them i'm pretty sure it's in the conspiracy tree but maybe not but it's somewhere in the database I never ever knew that because I always kind of ignored the database. That's another thing about the database, though, is it kind of because there's not one in AC1 and and whatnot. I feel like you can miss some of the people who are actually in real life. Yeah. When it, but when it comes to the database and, and all the other games, you could read their little excerpt, and it's like this person was a a lemon stand operator, <laughs> and then. <laughs> They became a Templar. Yeah. And then they became an evil Templar who poisoned the entire town with their lemons. Yeah, it's kind of like those Hitman kind of intro videos that explains who, yeah, who the person is much. before you assassinate them. Like, oh man, it was so cool. I will uh, I will look into that next time I play that game. Which will be never. I hope it's a long mm -hmm. time from now because I don't want to do it again because I've <laughs> done it very recently. But anyway... You know what? I was going to ask this earlier. I wanted to know what everyone's least favorite historical character is. Charles Lee. I can't say that about Charles Lee, personally. Like, I I actually think he's kind of a fun villain. Charles Lee. I haven't researched into him. But but where is he? Like, like where is Charles what Lee? What do you mean? What do you mean, where is he? Oh, okay. Where Fuck is you. Charles Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Good second. <laughs> Good. Where Good is morning. Charles Lee? <laughs> where is Charles Lee? Yeah, where is Charles Lee in history, man? Like you definitely got to make a clip out of that. <laughs> <laughs> he's somewhere in the American <laughs> Revolution, <laughs> but he's not like a, he's not like an important kind of figure to like focus on uh, hey is, is christopher guest a real life historical person oh yeah so. dude yeah yeah Fuck in him yeah hey it's me christopher guest uh, <laughs> i'm so excited to be doing templar things <laughs> rogue had like so little characters they even had benjamin franklin in there yeah which was awesome yeah, I mean, yeah, Rogue did not have a whole hell of a lot of real people in it, which is interesting. It's sort of an outlier in that sense. I don't know if I have, like, the least favorite Assassin's Creed character. I'm trying to think of one, because I know uh, Blue said it was Cleopatra because of, you know, some of the same things you were talking about. I'm I'm trying to think of what my least favorite historical... I mean, well, if Christopher Gist is, is real, then, and he is, <laughs> uh, that's easily the, the answer. I think he's the worst one. I'm trying to think if there's any other honorable mentions, though, for really shitty ones. Can we do honorable mentions for really good ones, too? Yeah, sure. let's do it. What do you got? And why is it Steve Bonnet? Well, of course it's Steve Bonnet. Oh, man. wait, hold on. Before we do that, before we do that, mm. I, 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 <laughs> I wanted to mention this. I, I, I think I've said this on, a, on an episode before, but I had no idea that Steve Bonnet was even a real person until that Taika Watiti project was, yeah. was greenlit. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, Tim, 
Taika Waititi is making a TV show about Steed Bonnet. And I, I feel like for in, in your head for at least like 10 seconds, you thought that Taika was going to make the most asinine Assassin's Creed spinoff possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... Because like I just and then and then I was like, well, why he was such he was such a great character. I had no idea he was a real person. I made like a freaking twenty two tw- tw- twenty two page thread about him before Taika Waititi announced that. <laughs> yeah, but I don't follow you on Twitter. Ooh, yeah, you oof. do. <laughs> yeah, I do. You caught me. You caught me. In my lie. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you're not following a guy, you're freaking. Uh, who's a guest? <laughs> That's gonna happen when we get Leo K on. He refuses to follow us. <laughs> <laughs> man, Leo is freaking amazing, man. <laughs> his his stealth videos are the level of stealth I aspire to get. <laughs> we also have to give credit where it's due. Jacers Hobbs Zero has some good stealth videos too. Oh yeah. Mr. Yeah. J Sirs is a good stealth boy. And Park Treviso is a good stealth boy too. Good stealth yeah. people. I guess around. I shouldn't say Jacers Hobbs 018 because it, it's just Jacers now. It is just Jacers so, now. He dropped the the. It's cleaner. Dropped the Habs. It's cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the Habs. It's cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Did Drop we? the 018. It's cleaner. <laughs> All right, so uh, Arshak, what are what are some honorable mentions? Some some favorite highlights, historical characters for you. First one is uh, Katarina Sforza. Uh, she is actually like it goes Blackbeard, then Katarina Sforza for me. Interesting, because man, she was portrayed so well in 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 Assassin's Creed Two as like a woman that can hold her her own. Yeah. She's strong. She's she's a good leader. Yeah. And then in Brotherhood, she just fucks Ezio, and that's it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, in Brotherhood, she's kind of reduced to a sexy bathtub scene, and that's about she's it. She's a damsel in distress. Yeah. But the then, fuck, Ubisoft. But I agree. but that was real though. That was real. She was she was like taken to. You know what else is castle. real? You know what else is real? What? Misogyny. <laughs> 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 Especially at Ubisoft. <laughs> Especially at Ubisoft. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else is real? Katarina had to turn him down to end up with Sophia later, you know? So that's good. <laughs> God, I love Sophia. Is Sophia real? No. Sophia is. Oh. <laughs> Sophia is a fictional character. <laughs> Brilliantly Fuck. made by by Darby <laughs> McDivitt. <laughs> what are you? Why? <laughs> I I just wanted to know. I don't I don't know if anyone's real. I've learned about Mirabeau, Christopher Gist. You can tell me Arno was real, and I'd believe you right now. Dude, when Arno was first revealed and his name was Dorian, I'm like, oh my god, are we gonna play an, a, a French Armenian assassin? But no. It was just Dorian. No. He he was an Armenian because Ar- Ar- Armenians tend to have the I A N in the oh. end. Arno Dorian is uh, is like literally one of the coolest names ever. It is a pretty cool name. Yeah. Hello, my name is Arno Dorian. I'd say an honorable mention for myself would be uh, Lorenzo Medici. Lorenzo, you know, Medici. and there's a fun yes. connection because he fell into the river Arno. Exactly. Oh, yes. As a little boy. <gasps> yes. <laughs> I just wanted to add something to the to the listeners too. Katarina, the fortress she's imprisoned in in AC Brotherhood. A few years back, she was holding that fortress by herself to secure her husband's name, who who died later on, and she had to secure Forley, which is where she meets Ezio. Damn, that's pretty cool. That is that is some uh, historical accuracy for for you guys. <laughs> Any any other honorable mentions? Uh, you, you you didn't say yours. Oh, uh, 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 um, <laughs> let me th- let me think. I have one more after you go. I mean, I think I did say Steed Bonnet, but if you said Steed Bonnet, I'm I'm gonna add one more pirate in there. Anne Bonnie 
And Bonnie is great. You know what? No, here's my answer. My favorite, uh, or my honorable mention, because my favorite is Blackbeard. I I think Mary Reed is a great character. Yeah, and Bonnie and Mary Reed, man, forever. I I, I freaking love those women. It's crazy because uh, Assassin's Creed has has so many strong women in their in their games, and they're yet to have like one female character that has the story. I'm like, come on, Assassin's Creed. You have you have the examples right there. Just Give us a great single female protagonist, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, Tim, did you have another honorable mention? Yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, uh, Francesco v- v- Vigelio, uh is technically he is he's he's a somewhat famous Italian painter, and it's kind of interesting because he's an assassin like before he ever even like painted anything, and it's interesting because he 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 kind of lament he kind of is just like lamenting about how. One day he'll settle down and start painting, but for now he has to keep doing assassin stuff. And uh, I hmm. just think that's a that's kind of a classic way to do a historical figure in AC because you get them while they're young and can run <laughs> around and kill people, and then they paint when they're older. Uh, the other thing I thought was fun uh, is even though conspiracies overall is pretty dreck, I like that. Tesla is implied to have like faked his death. And so he's like seen as an older man in conspiracies. Yeah. And I thought yeah. that was a creative thing to do. I like seeing. Old yeah. Man yeah. Tesla. So, yeah. More stuff like that would be cool. Yeah, for sure. Like, because cool. really leaning into the alternate history part of Assassin's Creed yeah. and allowing yeah. yourself to write a, a story for a character that maybe doesn't line up with fact. Right. Exactly. Or yeah. Or like if, yeah, like exactly, like if because with the pieces of Eden and things like that, that like f- for instance, uh, you know the assassins and Templars are pretty much hidden from history. So, hey, you know Pythagoras is another example of that. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, Pythagoras, Pythagoras was a real person who he's like a mortal in the game, who's right? like 150 years old in Odyssey through the use of a staff. Cool. <laughs> what I found like really amazing uh, about Odyssey is. It's connection to uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in the Da Vinci disappearance. They actually talk about Pythagoras's like sketches of like Isu artifacts and stuff. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. And in AC Odyssey, they they show him to be like, you know, this uh, staff bearer. And yeah, like like I love that connection between it and it. It finally made sense in my brain why Pythagoras would be over there. Yeah, that makes that's pretty cool. I forgot about that part of the Da Vinci disappearance, which is a great DLC. I guess overall, what we what 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 have we learned? Well, I think we've solidified my three camps of historical characters theory, with uh, Darby tier being the best, mm-hmm. uh, Quebec tier being acceptable. And then shitty tier being shitty. And uh, it seems like even when they're not the best characters, they are still doing their due diligence with historical research. I think there is some credit due to Ubisoft and the developers of these games that when we do have complaints and criticisms and characters we like better than other characters, it's almost entirely on a basis of the story and the character writing, not on a basis of like, how historically accurate they were or how, you know, they try to implement yeah. that, which I, I really, really appreciate of them because, you know, it takes, yeah, it, it takes a lot to have a story and then be historical accurate to like, you know, history itself. And in every a- AC game, you know, that's what m- makes my job so fun to like yeah. research because you know, during my research, like I'm, I'm researching those those figures and landmarks and stuff, and I'm highlighting freaking websites. Uh, my <laughs> favorite part comes when I am drawing the similarities and the differences between AC yeah. and the real life history. Well, it has been awesome to have you on and talk more about these historical characters. So thank you so much for joining us, Arshak. Dude, dude, it's a real, real pre- pleasure thing. Like, uh, thank you guys for having me. Like, this was so, so much fun. Where can people find you if they want to hear more and, and read more about your research? People can find me YouTube as AC Landmarks, AC Space Landmarks, and then on Twitter, 
mostly on Twitter right now, L like later on YouTube, once I'm more settled. On Twitter, it's AC underscore landmarks. Yeah, that's where people can find me. And if you want to follow my personal profile, it's uh, Arshok official, A-R-S-H-O-C-K official. Yeah, definitely check his stuff out. It is really high quality uh, and highly well-informed content. If you want to find us, you can find us on Twitter at Hookblade. Give us give us a cute little follow over there. Um, you can find us on Facebook at the Hookblade Podcast. If you're not listening to this on YouTube, please uh, pop over to our YouTube channel and subscribe to us there. We are, you know, the Hookblade Podcast. Those are just some of the ways you can support us besides liking, commenting, leaving a review on your podcast platform of choice. Thank you so much for listening, and it's it's been a pleasure. It's been a fun episode. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I have been the hook. And I've been the blade. And I've been the database. Thank you for listening. Hey, you switched it. You, you switched can't it. change it. You switched. <laughs> you got to be a lot of the... You were the historian at the beginning. <laughs> well, the database historian. You don't get two in one episode. <laughs> the database historian. <laughs> Save, save uh, it for your next one. All right. <laughs> and uh, we will see you next time. All right. Design. 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 Design.